improvisationalists are, are straddled by a genre, you know? And I like music that transcends genre. All the techniques I talk about and teach have been musical techniques that have been around since, you know, the dawn of, you know, 400 years old, since the dawn of the written Western European music. And um, so, you know, I talk about uh, these basic building blocks that, that are the substance of what music is made, uh, you know, on a, on a very, uh, very basic level, you know. And it really is those five elements, you know, rhythm, melody, harmony, dynamics, and orchestration. You, know, you put that together into a package, which is the form and structure, that's not going to change, you know. You can change the electronics, you can change this, that, and the other, but still, those elements, you know, mm -hmm. that's what we've got. That's what we've got to work with. So, you know, I always say, use this um, analogy of uh, building a wall, you know. If you, if you have a brick, and you understand the ramifications of one brick, you know, you can hold it this way, this way, this way, this way, you can cut it in half, you can make it stick out more, you know, then you can make a wall that would be really interesting using rhythm, you know. If you don't understand that you can turn a brick this way or that way or that way, then you may just make a boring wall, you know. So, um, those things can transcend genre, right? Then it's up to the bricklayer, the wall builder, right, to do whatever the hell he wants. Uh, in drumming, especially, I find, uh, you know, Jung talks about the fourfold nature of man's psyche or soul. And it's the intellect, the emotional aspect, the uh, physical aspect, and the intuitive. Okay, so all four of those things have to be somewhat in balance, I find, when you, when you do this. Uh, you know, you've got to be physically fit, you've got to be intellectually uh, competent and aware. You have to be intuitive and trusting enough to allow this thing that's out of your control to happen. And then um, you have to have some feeling and some emotion behind it. You know, and what, whatever that is, that's okay. You know, I mean, like, I, I usually don't express myself humorously when I play, you know. I love to play. I really enjoy it. But I, I tend to channel more darker emotions. And maybe because, you know, that's why I can be such a nice guy in real life. You know, I get all my darker stuff out. <laughs> I've died enough to be able to uh, open myself up to this thing, you know? And in a way, I mean, I take no responsibility for what happens in the moment. I, I accept for the fact that I have practiced, so whatever the technique, you know, that I've got um, to enable uh, this to happen, um, obviously, you know, if you hear something in your head or something's coming through you and you want to do it, you need the technique to be able to realize that idea. So I, I take responsibility for that, but on the other hand, what that idea is, why an idea is great on a certain night and may suck on another night, all that stuff's coming from another, you know, spiritual, for lack of a better word, energy that I have no control over. All, all I can do is try and show up every day and be as open as possible to that, that energy, you know? And I do it to a greater or lesser degree. I, I, you know, recently I've found something, you know, I mean, I've found a lot of these guys um, I have worked with in the past. You know, Tony Levin, I've worked with for I don't know how many years, maybe 10 years now, off and on. And he's one of these guys who, you know, we showed up for the Bosey 11 Stevens things. We had no idea what we were going to do. And we made a record in three days the first time. And the next time we had a little more time. But basically we jammed and we made stuff out of what happened. Um, Pat Mastelato and I have done this. We found ourselves in Austin after the earthquake in 94. And we started to play together, and we just, you know, rolled tape, went to the garage, and, and made out CDs, and did did solo or uh, duo gigs, you know, where we just filled the stage full of percussion, and improvised. You know, we didn't know what we were going to do.
musicians are good. This is another, you know, when we're talking about it, these like universal paradoxes too, because limitation can be really freeing yeah. if you say, okay, you know, I'm just going to play with my fingers for a while. You know, then you're going, uh, suddenly tons of ideas are coming because right. you're just playing with your fingers before you picked up sticks and done your typical drumistic stuff, you know. Um, so, you know, Stravinsky always talked about that, you know, if he knew what the structure of what he was going to compose for was, he could start. Otherwise, faced with infinite possibilities, he was overwhelmed and he didn't know where to start. So, you know, that helps you. Okay, I'll just deal with this. And then, you know, uh, within that little universe, let's see how many variations of interesting things I can come up with. I think what we're selling here, for people who have the ears to hear this, is an exclusive, unable to be repeated, you know, uh, event right. that can only happen once in a lifetime, that they can be a part of in a theater, in a live context, or hear a recording of that that can never be duplicated, you know? And I mean, that's, to me, that's like, wow, you know, that's rare, that's exclusive, that's like seriously, you know, unique and, and beautiful, and it's like finding a new species of, uh, you know, life or something. Another thing that I think is important is who you do this with, you have to be completely accepting of. My, my, and this is why I hardly ever work with other people because it's so difficult to get them to agree to this simple concept. A band is unconditional acceptance of everybody and their ideas, right? Yes, you can talk about an arrangement. Yes, you can talk about a concept. You can agree to go, yeah, we'll do this. But when it comes down to me playing like somebody else's idea of what I am, that's where I go, no, this is not me. You know, me is happening in the moment, you know? Don't tell me to play like I used to play in Frank Zappa, you know? Go hire somebody who wants to play like that today, you know? So then you get into this situation where it's very much like cooking, you know? Uh, a certain spice, a certain ingredient is going to make a certain flavor. You take that spice or that ingredient out of the, the dish and you have a completely different dish. Right. You know? So you have to accept what other people are doing in the moment. And there are days where I'm playing and I go, oh, I wish that guy didn't play that. You know? But I try and make something out of that. Uh, there are days where I go, oh my god, this is so phenomenal that this other guy's playing. I don't want to play the stuff I really feel like playing because it would destroy or get in the way of that. So there's all these decisions, you know, and I, I tried to make um, a list one time. I came up with, like, filled up a page. I don't, I don't know where it is right now. I should dig that out. But, you know, the main thing in improvisation is listen, right? That's the main thing. You have to just listen. And then your choices are, in a very simplistic way, go with or go against, okay? And either one's okay. Thank you.